How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Ultrasphere TCG and today I finally have the how to play video for you guys. It's been what about a year since I started posting videos and I still haven't made a how to play video. Well today is the day. I'm finally doing it so let's get into it. Actually quickly before we start this is part of a guide series um, and the other videos have more information about some of the more specific things. This video is primarily on how to set up the game, how to do a turn and all that kind of stuff, how to actually play the game, not the extra information. Because if I put all that into this video, that would be super overloaded. So that's why I separated it. All right, let's get in to playing the Ultra Sphere. So, your goal of the game, you will have five contestants, your opponent will have five contestants, and you're trying to knock out all five of their contestants, and they're trying to knock out all five of yours. All right. Before we start the game, we have to flip a coin to determine who goes first. I'm just going to say I'm going first for the sake of demonstration. That would be considered player one. Player one will lay out their five contestants on the board. So, all right, and there is strategy to where you put your contestants. Don't worry about that right now. All right, so I laid out my five contestants. Then your opponent, after you lay out yours, player two will lay out theirs. So I'm going to use Melon here as a representation of the opponent's board. Let's see if we can get her into the shot. All right. And you'll notice on your side, it will form three rows. One, two, three. Starting back here, this is your captain. This is your bench. All three of these units are your bench. And then up here you have the active row. These rows will be important when we go how a turn plays out because each of these rows will get their own mini turn within your overall turn. Round one, we're gonna start by drawing five cards. So let's do that. five cards. At the beginning of each round, you also get an increase to energy. So energy is how you use your skills, skills cost energy to use, and you get energy equal to the round it is. So, for, or yeah, so for example, it's round one, I have now one energy. At the beginning of round two, I would get two energy, round three, three energy, and so on. So right now, I only have one energy. Let's see what we have in our hand. All right. So now we get into the mini turns. We start with the active row, then we go to the bench, and then we go to the, act oh, sorry, we start with the captain row, we go to the bench, and then we go to the active. Starting with the captain, we can do two phases. There are two phases the equip phase and the action phase. So we start with the equip phase and within that equip phase, there are two things we can do. We can, first of all, upgrade or we can attach a skill or ability. So we're starting with the upgrade. What does it mean to upgrade? Well, if you look in our hand, I have a copy of Blitz right here. What I do is place this right on top and that's an upgrade. What does that do? Well, if we take a closer look at the card, you see these stats on the left over here. With every upgrade, you get an increase in stats, and it increases by one to every stat except for HP. HP stays the same no matter the upgrade. So my attack would be now two, my defense would be one, and my magic, if indicated by the red, magic and speed in this case, they are my power stats. Power stats increase by two instead of just one. So my magic now would be eight and my speed would be 11. So that's an upgrade. 
and you can do that a maximum of two times for a total of three cards on top of each other or yeah three cards in a stack see what else we can do now that ends the upgrade part now we can attach a skill or ability i'm going to attach an ability right here abilities go on the left side skills go on the right all right there's nothing else i can do so i will end the turn for that row and move on to the next row now we're at the bench the bench is a little interesting in how it works your decisions apply for all three of the units in that bench so i'm allowed one upgrade per mini turn i'll upgrade vera over here that means i cannot upgrade either of these two units this turn and then i will move on to the attachment phase where I can attach a skill or ability. In this case, I will attach Plasma Strike to the Knight. See, I do not have to attach it to the same unit I upgraded, but I can only do one attachment per mini turn. All right. Now, under normal circumstances, if this wasn't round one, then I could also attack. However, because it's round one and I am player one, I cannot attack except for my active unit in the case of player two, they would be able to attack with anyone during the first round if they had the capability of doing so. So I'm ending my turn for the bench. Now I move on to the active. I only have one skill left in my hand, one card left in my hand, and it's compatible. So I'm going to attach it right here. All right, now let's get into attacking or the action phase, which we didn't do much of in these other two rows. The action phase, you can do one of two things. You can either attack or you can switch. I'll go into switching a little bit later. So let's attack. There are two methods to attacking. You can either use a damage skill to attack. So if we looked at Plasma Strike over here, that's a damage skill. Damage uh, magic plus four minus target res. However, that costs three energy to use. This is the first round. I only have one energy to use. I can't do that. And also it's not even attached to Lundy over here. The other thing you can do is use a basic attack. Everyone has access to basic attacks and basic attacks always do attack damage. They use your attack set over here as your attack minus the target's defense. So my attack stat is three. Let's look at Melon's stats over here. She has zero defense, rest in peace. So she would straight up take three damage. Now there are other factors that go into this, like there's mastery, weaknesses, and resistances. There's speed, and you can potentially double the enemy, hit the enemy twice, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff that goes into it. That's the very basics of attacking. So if we ignored all that other stuff, no one would take three damage. All right, that would end the turn for the active row and my overall turn. Then it would be the opponent's turn. The opponent would draw their five cards. They would get their one energy and they would essentially do the same things that we just did here, except in the case of player two's first turn, they can attack with other units other than the active unit. Um, all right, so let's say the player does absolutely nothing and it's our turn because i have no cards left in my hand i will draw five cards you draw until you have five cards in your hand because as you saw with that last round you go through cards incredibly quickly and the game would be super slow if you only drew one card at a time so that's why you draw until you have five cards in your hand if you already have five cards you still get to draw one it's the beginning of a new turn. I get an increase in energy, so now I have two energy. All right, let's see what I can do. So I have no upgrades for Blitz over here. However, I could attach a skill, and that's what I'm going to do. So I skip the upgrade. I'm going to go straight into attaching a skill. Now he has two things attached. How do you know what your limit is? How many attachments can you make? That is based on your upgrade rank. So because Blitz is in rank two right now, I can attach two things. If I didn't have this upgrade, he was only in rank one, I would not be able to attach the skill because there's only one slot available. 
but because he's upgrade rank 2, I can attach a skill, another attachment here. All right, there's nothing else I can do for that row, so I end that row's turn, I move to the next row. In this case, we do have two upgrades available if we wanted to. We gotta choose which one we want. In this case, I'm gonna upgrade Vera again, so now she is max rank three. And I will also attach this ability. Let's scoot her over real quick. I'll attach that ability. All right, now we can in fact attack from the bench if you have the range to do it. In this case, if you take a look at Vera's card, she is a ranger and she has two ranged. I have a video about classes because classes determine range. So if you wanna go watch that, it will list out all the classes and their ranges. Vera has two ranged, that means one, two. She can hit the opponent's active unit. So why don't we do that? If we take a look at her stats, that's five attack. It's also her power stat. So that means it goes up by two with each upgrade and she has two upgrades. So that's seven, nine. And let's ignore everything else. Nine damage to Melon. He's not having a good day right now. All right. And that's attacking. So that would end that turn for that row. Let's look at the next row, the active row. Nothing I can do with these cards there. But I will, since I have two energy, I didn't use any energy in the last attack because that was a basic attack. If we look at Lundy's card, right here is a unique skill. Every contestant has a unique skill. Some of them do damage, some of them are utility skills, but they all come with one. In this case, Bandit Blade is a damage skill, costs two energy, and does attack plus two minus target defense. So Lundy's attack is three, he has no upgrade, so it stays three, and then plus two, five. Melon would take five damage, ignoring everything else. All right, that would end the turn. Um, for that row and my entire turn, the way the opponent would take their turn, let's say they do absolutely nothing again, I still have two cards in my hand. So in that case, I would draw three cards to get five. And once again, my energy increases. Now we're up to three. And your energy replenishes at the end of each round. So I used two energy. I, would, I had zero at the end of my last turn. But now that it's a new round, I replenish all my energy and it increases by one, so I'm at three energy. All right, looking at these, there's not a whole lot I can do. Counter is compatible with Blitz, you can tell by the requirement box here. However, he is only upgrade rank two, and I already have two skills attached, so I cannot attach this. So I can't do anything there. I will move on to the next row. In this case, we do have an upgrade. I'll upgrade Yvette. And I will give her treatment, which is a utility skill that can heal and, oh no, sorry, it doesn't, it doesn't heal. It just cures ailments and skills go on the right. All right. So that's the upgrade and the attachment for that row. Once again, I could attack with Vera, nine damage again. Melanin is really not having a good day. That ends the turn for this round. Or sorry, that ends the turn for this row. Now the active row. Now the smart thing to do is be attack again. I do actually have enough energy now to use smoke bomb if I wanted to. But instead, for the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to switch. This is the other thing you can do in your action phase. You can either attack or you can switch. So I'm going to switch. I'm going to take Lundy because... He's in danger. He doesn't want to be out here in the active row. And I switch back one row. You can only switch one row away like that. And that would end the turn for the active row and then accordingly end the turn for my entire team. Now, if it was the other way around and instead Instead of attacking with the bench, I wanted to switch from the bench. So instead of switching out with Lundy, I would be switching in with the knight. 
That would end the turn for this row. However, the active row has still not taken their turn yet. So then I would be able to do all the normal turn things with the knight here because he just switched into the captain row. Oh, and the other note for switching, cap, I, did I say captain row? I meant active row. Captain row over here, your captain cannot switch. The only way that they could switch is through a skill like teleportation, for example, that allows switching. But in all normal cases, the captain cannot switch. They are stuck back here unless the bench is entirely empty. How does the bench become empty? Well, that moves on to the next topic, which is knockouts. So let's say Melon over here was angry at all the abuse she was taking and struck back knocking out the Castellabria Knight. So you would discard the, if if the Knight's HP dropped to zero, they'd be considered knockout and you would discard the contestants, all their upgrades and any attached abilities or skills. All right, then at the end of that turn, so if my opponent knocked out my unit during their turn, which is most likely what would happen. Then at the end of their turn, I would move up a unit to replace the fallen active unit. The active row always has to be filled. The bench is second priority and the captain is last. Now that there's an open slot, I still can't switch because the entire bench has to be empty. So there's just gonna be an empty hole where your contestant once was. All right, and let's say Melon managed to knock out Lundy as well. Then we would have to move someone else to replace him. Another round goes by. Yvette disappears as well. Then Vera, the final bench member, moves up to the active row. Then, since there's no one in the bench, that's when the captain moves up. When the captain moves up, they lose the captain status, some skills and abilities rely on the captain status, and they would lose that once they move out of that slot. All right, and let's say Vera is KO'd too, and then Blitz would move up like that. And uh, now it's just a 1v1. And then when the entire team is knocked out, like I said at the beginning, you win the game. So let's say... I Melon just had a pretty good run right here, but it would not last. She is KO'd, and we would win. If it was the other way around, the opponent KO'd all of us, then we would lose. It's as simple as that. All right, so that is the basics on how to play the Ultra Sphere TCG. I skipped over a lot of that extra information. Like I said, weaknesses and resistances and all these stats, those are in separate videos. Actually, I haven't made the stats video yet. I will get on that sometime, maybe. But anyways, all that extra information is in other videos so I don't overwhelm this video. It's already pretty long. That is all I have for you today. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you next time. Bye, Castle. Out.